It's a perfect example of how you can write a story about happiness. So we'll see what happens when I read this book. That is one of my pet peeves. It makes me cringe. I don't like it. So I've noticed that lately cozy fantasy has been booming everywhere online. Suddenly everyone is recommending books about orcs making coffee and demons falling in love. I like getting cozy. I mean, have you seen my YouTube channel? But I'm also someone with a dead cold heart inside of her little body. When it comes to food, I don't have a sweet tooth and the same thing goes for books. If it's too sugary and sweet, I do not like it. But I do want to be happy. I know, crazy idea. So I really want to try my hand at the cozy fantasies genre. So I have here some very popular cozy fantasy books and I'm gonna be reading them and telling you what I think of them. Just a very quick overview. Of course, I'm going to be reading the book that started it all, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry about an orc that starts a little coffee shop. Then with a little bit more witchy romance vibes, I have the very secret society of irregular witches. And last but not least, I have a book that I've seen almost every single person who read it give five stars and that is the house in the cerulean sea so the first book that i'm going to be reading is the crown jewel the epitome of cozy fantasy and that is legends and lattes the book that started it all originally self-published i believe by travis baldry but now picked up by tour. I kind of feel like if I'm going to be reading this book, I need a latte. But I have a confession to make. And that is that I don't actually enjoy coffee. So we're gonna need some other kind of latte. <laughs> so I thought maybe I can make a matcha latte while I read this book. I don't actually have matcha at home. So I thought maybe we can go out and get myself some matcha so I can actually make it at home and we can do our own little coffee shop thingy together and make our own matcha latte and then I'll read this book. I feel like that's on theme. So in Legends and Lattes we follow the story of Vivian, an orc who has had her time going on quests and fighting monsters and now she decides that she just wants to settle down and open something called a little coffee shop in this magical town full of magical creatures that have never heard of coffee, let alone a latte. So all the odds are stacked against her, but she decides that this is her dream, this is what she wants to do. So she finds an old shack that she turns into a little cafe and she starts selling her coffee. And every chapter you kind of meet new characters that add something to her coffee shop. So people who build things, people who make music, people who can bake cinnamon rolls. There really isn't much plot to the story. You just follow Vivian and her newfound family as they're trying to run this cafe. And every day they're adding new items to their menu list. And that's the joy of reading this book. How do people get it to look like so cool the way it does in a coffee shop where it's like all cloudy because the moment I mix the drink with the milk it just becomes one color and it doesn't go all swirly. What are the tricks on that one? Let's taste what I've created. Ooh! Oh that's good! I bought the sweet green tea variety. Let's be honest, that's what makes the matchas in coffee shops so good is because there's just a lot of sugar in it. <laughs> oh, this is great. Little update on Legends and Lattes. I started reading this in the morning. You know, I was still in bed. I was like, I don't wanna get out of bed. I think I read almost a hundred pages in one go because 
I was so into it because it's just so cute. <laughs> it really is just an orc and her little cafe and you just feel so much for her. Like I just want to see where it goes. You know, I want to see what she's going to do with her cafe, how she's going to build it up, what it's going to look like. And I'm like invested in her little, her little dream basically. So far the only stakes that we have is that she eventually has to pay taxes. Those are the only stakes. And you know what? I'm totally okay with it. I also want to share a little fun fact about how this book came to be because apparently the author Travis Baldry was, before he was a writer, he was a full-time audiobook narrator and this is his first book that he wrote himself and he says in a little interview at the end of the book that the idea for this book really came because he wanted a Hallmark story like a Hallmark Channel romance story set in a fantasy world and then he was like you know what I'm just gonna write it kind of as a joke as just like a little personal project and that turned out to be Legends and Lattes and it became like a huge thing so I think I think that's a very cute. Oh, there's like matcha latte all over my book right now. Oh boy. <laughs> well, we're calling that on theme. In the spirit of legends and lattes, I decided to bake something. So join me as I make oatmeal apple bars and tell you my final thoughts of the book. As excited as this book got me in the first 100 pages, that excitement quickly dwindled as I ended up being quite disappointed in Legends and Lattes. There's one major problem, but I'll get to the smaller things first. First of all, the cute bits got gimmicky quite fast. If you like the idea of fantasy characters discovering the concept of iced coffee, you may really enjoy this book. And I liked this little bits that the story kept doing one time, um, but after the characters discovered five more normal world foods, I thought it was just getting a little bit gimmicky and I lost interest. There's a really cute romance blossoming between Vivian and her alluring barista and it was very cute and promising but it develops only in the last 100 pages and thus felt very rushed with a lot of heartfelt moments that didn't deserve the payoff because they weren't properly built up. And the last small thing that disappointed me was that I predicted the plot twist immediately. It's such a cliche and overdone one that you can instantly see it coming. All that said, my main problem with this book, the reason I lost interest so fast, was the complete lack of depth for anything. All of the characters have one personality trait and that's it. What you know about them when you meet them is everything you will know about them for the rest of the story. No depth. Out of the vast cast of characters, there were maybe two side characters that did have more to them than meets the eye, and those turned out to be my favorites. It quickly became obvious to me that the charm of Legends and Lattes is that it's a small town romance, only it takes place in a fantasy world. But if you take away that fantasy world and just look at it as a small town story, it's a pretty cliche and surface level iteration of the small town story. And it makes me sad because just because something is wholesome and cute doesn't mean you have to give up on depth. I understand the hype, it's cute and wholesome. Maybe I'm just rotten on the inside, but I think the selling point of this book is its concept, the cute small town story, but it's a fantasy world. But to me, it really lacked in execution. I woke up this morning and there's snow like there's a little bit of snow and I'm just very confused because it's a March and we haven't had snow here in the Netherlands all year like this winter there has been no snow but now suddenly it's really cold and it's March I don't know what's going on anyway let's talk about the very secret society of regular witches. I've actually already finished this. I actually took this one with me on the plane because I went on a holiday to Vietnam 
and I had like a 12 hour plane travel ride so I thought I can finish this book as I am on the plane and in the hotel and stuff. In the very secret society of irregular witches, we follow a young witch named Micah Moon. And in this world, witches are supposed to be solitary. They cannot be together because then bad things happen. But one day, Mika receives a very mysterious invitation to come to Nowhere House, where she finds out there are three young witches that are being raised together. And she is asked to fulfill the task of becoming their teacher in magic. And the story really is about her finding her found family. There's also a very handsome, prickly librarian that a little bit of a romance blossoms with. And it's all around witchy family vibes. It's actually zero degrees right now. In March. Must be a witch's doing. I tried to create kind of witchy vibes. Um, I'm not really sure how, but I did wear my black cat earrings that's on theme and when i started reading this book i kind of felt like we were going to get something very similar to legends and lattes because it starts out super cute and wholesome and i was definitely enjoying it but there was that part of my brain that was like it's just gonna be too cute and like it's not gonna go anywhere but despite this book definitely having a few frustrations that i will get to i think the Secret Society of Irre Irre Ugh, this title. <laughs> the Secret Society of Irregular Witches is a fantastic example of how you can write a sweet, happy, and wholesome story while still maintaining depth. Yes, it's a cute story about a little witch that's coming to a fun little house with a nice library and funny, quirky characters, but you can really tell that at its core, this is a story about loneliness, about finding places to belong, about dealing with family trauma. Like this book actually gets surprisingly dark at times and because the overall tone of this book is so happy and wholesome, those few bits of like slightly dark tones really hits even harder. Even though the story is a pretty standard one of, you know, someone feeling like they don't belong anywhere, finding a place to belong, standard found family story, it still hit so hard and I felt so much for these characters. I think I did film like a few little bits <laughs> in the hotel room while I was reading this book. So I'll show you my reaction right now. <sighs> it's so cute. Like I feel really sad, but in a happy way. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> And here's the thing, the sad moments aren't the things that like hit me emotionally, that made me feel like that. It was the happy moments that made me feel that way. That made me just so elated for the characters, for finding their happiness. I think I've shared this quote like time and time again. It's an Ursula Le Quinn quote that I love. We have a bad habit of considering happiness something rather stupid. Only pain is intellectual, only evil interesting. We can no longer describe a happy man, nor make any celebration of joy. And I think this is a wonderful quote about how we tend to think that happy stories are always just gonna be like, you know, not as interesting or just surface level. And we like dark and gritty stories because that's what real interesting themes are. And I think I, I've personally fallen into this as well. And I think it's also why I was so disappointed with Legends and Lattes because it just kind of proves that prejudice of like a happy, funny story just ends up being very surface level. But that's why I really loved this book because it, it's a perfect example of how you can write a story about happiness. Literally the whole theme of this book is just people finding happiness with each other and exploring all that happiness and all the things that are in the way of our happiness with so much depth, but still like very simple and in a way that makes you breeze through the book. Well done, Sangu Mandana, thank you. That being said, there are a few things I didn't like about this book. <laughs> the writing style is overall really good. Like, Mandana has her own very quirky writing style that very 
obviously sets her apart from other authors. She chooses often to go for an omniscient writing style, so not just close to the characters, only writing about things the characters know, but an omniscient narrator that can kind of narrate things together and that makes it very fun. That being said, she has a few writing quirks that irked me. The first one is that the characters are constantly muttering under their breath. <laughs> There's so many moments where a character would be like muttering, you know, like a confession under their breath of like, oh, if only you knew, or oh, you, you have no idea. Oh, I actually feel like this. And they're all muttering it under their breath, clearly to kind of share with the reader how they're really feeling. But it just felt so weird because does that happen in real life? No. Have you ever muttered under your breath how you were actually feeling? No, you just think it. And it was just clearly happening so often, <laughs> just so we could get the perspective of the other character that we aren't following. It irked me. The second thing that irked me a little bit is this is a sunshine grumpy romance, which of course, it's fine, it's not my personal favorite, I've talked about it before. I just don't really like Sunshine Grumpy stories. But the reason I didn't like it in this book is because the author took it extremely literal. As in, our main character, Micah Moon, is constantly being described as the sun and having sunshine in her eyes and her smile is like the sun shining. And I was like, okay, I get it. This is a sunshine character. And then our grumpy love interest, Jamie, the hot librarian, is constantly being described as literally grumpy. I think he describes himself as a grumpy man multiple times. To me, it was just a little too on the nose. But maybe if you're a sunshine grumpy lover, uh, you might enjoy that little on the nosiness. Oh, and then the last thing, I know I'm praising this book, for having depth in the characters. This book also has a case of being like, I'm 14 and this is deep in the sense that there are a lot of things being said in this book that you could find on like a Tumblr quote. Actually, not even, no, 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 that's too good. On like a Google images quote. I did not expect that in 2023, we would still have a book published that without irony, without a single hint of irony, has a scene where the main character is like, did you know we're actually all made of stardust? And there are many other instances where the characters say things that feel like one of those inspirational quotes like, I don't want to jump because what if I fall? No, am I darling? But what if you fly? Things like that. There's a lot of that in this book. And I'm personally, that is one of my pet peeves. Makes me cringe. I don't like it. Other than that, I praise this book. It deserves the hype. I gave it four out of five stars and I'm feeling very happy inside after reading this book. This book did what Legends and Lattes couldn't do for me. Good morning. Where's the book? I am going to start reading The House at the Cerulean Sea by TJ 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 Clune. I'm pretty sure this is the highest rated one out of all the books I'm reading for this video. Let me let me check that. 4.22 for The Secret Society of Witches. 4.33 for Legends and Lattes. Wow, that's really high. Oh, it's called The House in the Cerulean Sea. I've been saying this wrong the whole time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This one's by far the most popular 
book with almost half a million ratings on Goodreads and it has a 4.44 average rating. That's really high. Wow. I'm going to be honest, my heart longs for a dark and gritty story. <laughs> I finished The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches like two days ago and for some reason it feels like too much of sweetness at once to immediately pick up this one. Which doesn't really make sense because I can easily read dark stories back to back without feeling like I need to read something sweet to lighten it up. But I do somehow the other way around. And I'm not really sure why that is. Like I really shouldn't have so much trouble just reading a bunch of cute and nice stories. So we'll see what happens when I read this book and I thought that it would be fun to listen to the audiobook because I also have the audiobook for this one while playing a cozy fantasy game, you know, for reading cozy fantasy books. Let's also play some cozy fantasy games. So I'm gonna boot up Stardew Valley and start a new farm and listen to the audiobook for the house in the Cerulean Sea. Let's do that. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Read for you by Daniel Hennig. For those who have been with me since the beginning, look at what we've made. And as I boot up the game, let me tell you about a little bit of the plot of this book. So, in the House of the Cerulean Sea, we follow a very respectable 40-year-old man who listens to the rules and does things according to the book. Then one day, he is summoned to perform a task for extremely upper management, which involves him checking in on an orphanage that houses magical children. Think sprites, gnomes, and my personal favorite, the literal Antichrist. And the story really is about him going to this island with the orphanage, getting to know the children, learning that there is more to life than just the boxes that we put people in. Hi. <laughs> oh, I kind of lost track of time and I accidentally listened to the audiobook for four hours straight. So that means I'm now almost halfway into this book already. My brain is a little bit mush <laughs> from listening to the audiobook for so long. So far, this book, very cute. I just have to say that the main character, Linus, this 40-year-old man, I somehow cannot stop imagining him as Bernois Blanc <laughs> from the Knives Out movies, you know, played by Daniel Craig. If he wasn't a detective, that's how I feel Linus would be. Except Linus maybe is a little bit more of a fan of all the rules, but that's just like the type of person. I feel like he dresses the same way. I'm just imagining him like that and I can see that there's a kind of romance blossoming between Linus and the master of the orphanage, Arthur. And so I am from now on just going to imagine Arthur as Hugh Grant, like Bernard Blanc's husband in Knives Out. So that, that is my little, my little brainchild for now. This book is very funny as well. Legends and Lattes and the Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Yeah, these titles <laughs> were also funny, but this one to me is the most effortlessly funny. I always have trouble with humor in books because so much of humor is the delivery, right? It's like how someone's saying it, how an actor, a comedian is presenting the joke to you. So when it's just on paper, very often it just doesn't really hit for me because you don't get the delivery in the writing. But this one, it's working for me and I've just realized maybe it's because I'm listening to the audiobook because then you do have someone delivering the joke to you maybe that's it I do highly recommend the audiobook it's very good whoa sorry my laptop is do you hear that my laptop is sounding like the plane that I boarded a few days ago. The narrator of the audiobook is doing an amazing job at all the different voices. Like he really does a different voice for all the different characters that really shows the personalities of those characters. Most audiobook narrators don't do this. That's why I wanted to mention it because if you're looking for a good audiobook, 
this one genuinely very well done but yeah also the contents of the book are just really funny i just cannot stop laughing at the fact that one of the magical children at the orphanage is literally the antichrist <laughs> and we just get countless of scenes of this little boy being like i am the son of lucifer and i'm going to kill you all and then his teacher is like can you please keep it down for a second like you're just like waking everyone up the entire tone of the book is a little unserious you know the fact that linus is working for extremely upper management like that's just the name of the extremely upper management kind of tongue-in-cheek like this very bureaucratic world that he's coming from and now he's going to this very cute little island that is kind of outside of that and I've noticed that this is also kind of a hallmark of cozy fantasy because Legends and Lattes had this as well and the very secret society of irregular witches had it as well but I think this one so far is doing the best job at it as I went to visit my parents for a day I finished the house in the cerulean sea I read a bit in the physical book as well, and I have to say, if you're going to read this book, the audiobook really is a much better experience, just because the narrator is so good. The ending of this book was, yet again, a bit too mushy for me. It's just another iteration of the finding your true family story without adding anything new to it, so it didn't blow me away. That being said, I did really enjoy it because it was just so funny, so well written, and delightfully quirky. So I'll give it three and a half stars. Guys, it's actually snowing. Like for real this time, not just wet snow. Like the snow is actually staying on the ground. It looks, oh, I know it's March. I really, really thought because spring is coming and it's March that we were just going to have a snowless winter because we hadn't had any snow this year. But now on the, what the 10th of March, the snow is staying and the world is white and beautiful. I have to go outside. I have to go outside. Hello. <laughs> and as the snow melts on my coat, <laughs> I'll make a cup of tea and we'll do the conclusion of this cozy fantasy video. Okay, I cannot film myself while also showing the snow outside because of the white balance, but just know, just imagine in your mind that this window out here, it's snowing. Okay, I made a special cup of rose flavored tea and let's talk about cozy fantasy and what I think of it. Okay, so cozy fantasy obviously has existed for a longer time than the trend. I mean, I think the trend kind of started with Legends and Lattes, but as the author rightfully points out in an interview at the end, the concept of like cozy fantasy stories has been around for a very long time, especially Terry Pratchett. Most of his work could be considered cozy fantasy. I haven't read his work yet, but now I really want to. <laughs> there are often very simple stories about finding the joys in life and most of them have very quirky characters and a very funny writing style which i also very much appreciate out of all of these cozy fantasy stories i would say that they all although being about the simple things in life still try to tackle some kind of you know nice message or some kind of problem uh, in the world if you kind of compare them you can see that most of them try to tackle personal problems like should you follow your dreams or not or how do you overcome like your own personal traumas and generational trauma and, and then this book is like let's tackle 
systematic oppression. <laughs> a major plot point in the story is that magical beings are very heavily discriminated against and it kind of tries to tackle that. I'm personally just never really a fan when authors take like a huge subject that requires a lot of nuance to talk about and is very complex and then just kind of use it as a small little problem for the quirky characters to overcome. So that's what I mean when I say that I feel like the story is a little oversimplified. But my point is, despite these all being like cozy fantasies, they definitely are all proof that you can still try to write something interesting, even if it's just simple and happy. So going over them all from worst to best, uh, Legends and Lattes, although it didn't work for me, I think it would still really work for you if you think that the concept of a cute cozy coffee shop story in a fantasy setting is enough to pull you through the entire book. And uh, if you're like me and you very easily find things gimmicky, you're not gonna like this, but if that doesn't sound like you, I think you might really love this. The House in the Cerulean Sea is one that is especially amazing if you really want something funny and you can really appreciate a very good, well-written, quirky writing style. This one has the most memorable characters out of all the ones. And then my personal favorite is definitely The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I think this one did the best job at striking that balance between just like a, a happy, funny, quirky story but still saying some very interesting things and really diving deep in some very personal emotions of the characters. This one's also by far the heaviest on the romance. Um, in these two, the romance is more like a more like a side note. In this one, there's more focus on it and I really, really enjoyed it. Even though I don't like grumpy sunshine characters, I still root it for these two, despite them being a little cringe sometimes, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> if you're still looking for other recommendations for cozy fantasy, I will link videos in the description of other bookish creators whose videos I watched about cozy fantasy because there's other people that have made amazing videos already giving great recommendations. So I'll link that in the description and I would advise you to check them out. Now let me know if there are any cozy fantasy books that you would personally recommend or what your thoughts were on the books that I read for this video. Oh, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy watching me and would like to see more. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon with another video next week. Goodbye!